Hey guys, what's happening? In this video, we're going to cover two things. Uh, firstly, how to use SoundCloud 64 channel. Uh, secondly, how to send audio signals from Logic Pro to Ableton Live. And I'm really sorry if there's noise because my neighbors are like banging their walls. I don't know why. And uh, okay, so how to send signals from Logic Pro to Ableton Live. The rewiring between Ableton and Logic works pretty well when uh, Logic is the host and Ableton is a slave. Everything is perfect, in sync. But the moment you try to uh, lo launch Ableton Live first and then launch Logic Pro, Logic Pro does not want to act as a slave. It's one egoistic software. I don't know why. So how do you solve that? Basically, we're going to use SoundCloud 64 channel as an agent between these two. So it's going to take the audio signals coming from Logic and send it out to Ableton Live for recording. So let's see how to do that. Okay, so before we start, make sure you have installed Soundflower and you launch it. Once you launch it, you're going to see the Soundflower logo in the menu bar. You click on that, you're going to see Soundflower 2 channel and Soundflower 64 channel. And uh, then you can set the buffer sizes for each of them. That will, um, basically your latency will depend on how much you've set your buffer size on. We are not going to get into that right now. So, okay, now we need to send signals which are like we need to send signals bit from logic and have them going to one of the tracks or men, like multiple tracks to ableton live normally this works like i said earlier this works the other way around if you launch logic pro and then launch Log uh, ableton live ableton live is going to work as a slave and send out signals to logic you have ableton live as an input uh, under your tracks in logic but if you launch Ableton Live and then you launch uh, Logic Pro, both of them work independent of each other. So in that case, we will have to first launch Ableton Live. And once we have, once Ableton is running, okay, this is a new session, uh, then we launch Logic Pro. It says a different rewire host application is running. So this is what happens. It won't work as a slave. It's just going to work independent of Ableton Live. We say OK and let's create a new project. Actually, I'm going to select one of uh, open one of my previous projects so that we can just get that. I don't have to compose anything right now. I can just use these tracks which I have already laid down. So these four tracks, the ones over here are muted. Uh, this actually I don't need. I can just get rid of this track. So these are the four tracks that I want to expect basically uh, rewire out to Ableton Live. I'm not sure if you can hear this right now. Let me check my output. Okay, my output is already set to Soundflower 64 channel. In your case, both of these are going to be your audio device. In my case, it's I'm using the Mbox 2 Mini. So it's the Mbox 2 Mini. If you're using your internal sound card, it's going to be that. So what we are going to do, like, let's just hear how the track sounds. Apply changes. And very well. So basically, you, you can, uh, Logic is sending out your signals to the Mbox Mini or your sound interface, and then you can hear stuff. But this is not what we want. We want uh, these signals going out to Ableton Live. So the first thing that you need to do is go to your sound, uh, your Logic's preferences. You can either uh, use the keyboard combination command comma, or you can just do it from your preferences right here. So the output device, input device, digital design, fine. The output device, I need 64 channel to be set as this output device. For some reason, it's going to set your input device to Soundflower as well, but I'm just going to change it back to digital design. IO buffer size, I have kept it 128. If it sounds stuttery on your computer, you could try 256 or 512 or something. <clears throat> Fine, let's just say apply changes. This takes a while sometimes. Okay, so that's done. Now, I'm just going to go to my mixer and uh, for some reason on my computer when I try to run Ableton Logic at the same time, uh, the seek bar kind of does not move. You can see the and the audio levels would, uh, would be kind of jittery or something. You can't hear anything actually because as of now you haven't set any outputs. So let's do that. These are the four tracks. One, two, three, four that I need to be 
uh, sent out to Ableton Live. So st all of these have been assigned to Stereo Out. So I'm going to select each of these tracks and uh, I'm going to set the output to output 3 and 4. So this one is to uh, 3 and 4. So I'm going to uh, 3 and 4 is already being utilized by this track. So uh, I'm going to say output 5 and 6 this time. See, you have 64 of these till 63, 64. Like that is what Sound Plus 64 is all about. You have like 64 stereo, 64 tracks, which makes it about uh, 32, uh, 64 mono tracks, which makes it about 32 stereo tracks. So the next one I'm going to set to 5 and 6 and then 7 and 8 and this one to 9 and 10 so 3 and 4 5 6 7 and 8 9 10 so we are utilizing about 10 buses out of the 64 so let's open live and now we have okay it was my alarm clock so i'm going to make four audio tracks for each of the track which is going to come in from logic and in the audio input you can see the default audio inputs like these are the audio inputs that i normally if you've set this to in uh if you haven't set it to soundflower it's going to be again digit design and this is how it's going to look you will be having like one or two inputs whichever inputs are coming from your computer's in uh, input device but in our case, we need to go to sound preferences. Oh, sorry, the Ableton Live's preferences. You can do it from under file menu over here, or you could just again use the keyboard combination command comma. And uh, then we go to audio tab, and under the input device, we are going to select Soundflower 64 channel. So once you do that, you can see that we have three and one and two three and four five and six seven and eight now we only have them till seven and eight because we haven't configured the buses or the channels which are uh, after that so we need to just go configure uh, just click on this configure output oh uh, sorry input config and we're going to activate how many other tracks we're using so we're just going to use we are utilizing uh, 10 tracks so i'm just going to uh, activate 10 of these so say OK. And once we've done that, we can set the first one to three and four, second one to five and six, third one to seven and eight, and the fourth one to nine and ten. So now we have all the tracks which were in logic over here assigned to these four tracks in Ableton Live. So next I'm just going to play the audio. Okay, crap, my bad. I forgot that you need to set all of these to record. You have to record um, um, all of these tracks. So just hold down the con command key and make sure all of these are record armed or else you can't hear any audio coming out. So there you go. You have assigned your tracks from Logic to their separate audio tracks in Ableton Live. Now, the problem with this is that maybe uh, your tempo sync won't work between the two applications, but this is a good technique when you have composed a track in uh, Logic and you want to just track it down to different tracks in Ableton Live and then add some of the elements that Ableton has, use some of the effects, effect tracks that Ableton has. So it's a pretty cool thing to do. So if you like this video and if you found it useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel by clicking on this button right here. That way you get to stay updated with all my videos. And if there's anything you need to ask, you can ask that in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time with another video. Bye-bye.